Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. Here is the game The Outer Wilds, which features some interesting mechanics and systems. Let's inspect and remake the Scout Launcher. You press a button to shoot a probe, which has a camera attached to it, and you can take shots from that camera and even move it around. I won't cover how it works, how I remade it, and how you too can make something like this in your own games. After watching the video, you can go ahead and download the project files and inspect all the source code. Watch the home playlist if you want to learn some more about some other games like for example the cleaning minigame in Rover Mechanic Simulator or the soil moisture system in Endzone A Warm Lepart. And follow the curator page on Steam if you want to see more of these types of videos. Alright, so first just a quick overview of what the game is about to give you some context. It's called The Outer Wilds and it's a very interesting adventure exploration game. You're an astronaut going off on your very first mission to explore the solar system. You have full control over your spaceship. You can launch from anywhere and land in any place. Then you'll leave your spaceship and explore on foot. Each planet is unique, with a very different mystery to uncover. It is a very mysterious game and has a really awesome central mechanic that I really don't want to spoil here so I won't say any more. If you're into exploration games and uncovering mysteries then definitely give this one a try. And if you're just an indie game developer then I would also encourage you to play it because the central mechanic is really just that interesting and very unique. Also fun fact, this game was made with Unity. Okay, so let's inspect and remake the Scout Launcher. It involves using some interesting Unity features that you might not know about. Do you want to master game development and make a full-time living creating games? Learn how to do it with this video sponsor, the Ultimate Game Dev Course. It's a massive course model at an extremely low price, taught by both Jason Wyman and Thomas Brush, who together already have over 3,500 students worldwide. It will teach you everything you need to know to make both 2D and 3D games on a professional level with some good patterns and workflows. On top of this, it will also teach you how to successfully launch your game and hopefully make a full-time living. So you will learn how to work with publishers, crowdfunding, how to run a successful Kickstarter, just like Thomas himself has done. Jason is a veteran in the AAA games industry, having worked on massively complex titles like EverQuest 2 and Vanguard, and Thomas has published two games that were very successful and received a bunch of awards and raised hundreds of thousands of dollars from publishers and Kickstarter. The campaign starts on July 1st and runs for only 30 days or until all of the seats are sold out. There's only 300 limited seats available to ensure the best experience possible for all students. So go ahead and get the ultimate game dev course before the seats run out with a link in the description and turn game dev into your dream job. Okay, so let's remake the scout launcher. Now first let's inspect what happens in the game itself. The scout launcher is a tool you can equip and then when you fire it, it shoots the scout pro. And as it goes, an image pops up on the screen that shows what the probe is seeing. Note how the screen is a UI element on top of the main UI. Also the probe has a different visual, different post-processing. Then by pressing a button, you can take another screenshot from the probe and update the view. Every time you press the button, it updates with a new image from the probe camera. As for the probe itself, it's a simple projectile. It gets fired and falls along with gravity. Once the bottom part of the probe hits something, it sticks. So if the top part hits something that doesn't stick, only the landing gear sticks. And the last ability is you can change the angle of the camera. So you can look left, right, up, down by pressing some other buttons. So you shoot the pro, you get an image, then you can update that image at will. Then when it lands somewhere, you can press some more buttons to rotate the view and see anything around the pro. It's a really interesting mechanic and it perfectly matches the game. The game is all about exploration, so sending a probe out to an undiscovered place is a great mechanic that perfectly fits with the genre. So let's see how we can rebuild this, which is actually quite easy if you know about one specific Unity tool. So first of all, for the projectile itself, it's all very standard. I just made the probe game object, I had the collider and a rigid body and that's pretty much it for the setup. When I press the mouse button, it just spawns a probe directly on the camera's position and sets the rigid body velocity based on the player's camera forward vector. With that, I can look anywhere and shoot out the probe very easily. And by the way, for the probe visual that I'm using here, it's from the Simple Space Asset Pack. There's a link if you want to get it. Now for the unlending logic. I need to know when the bottom part of the object touches something. There are many ways to do this. You can do it all through code, essentially just constantly fire a box cast or you can do it with colliders, which is the approach that I used. Essentially, I just need to position a collider at the bottom of the probe and then listen to collisions. Now, always keep in mind that in order for a collision to occur, there must be a rigid body present on at least one of the collision objects. I'm saying this because I myself forgot about this rule. If you want some more specifics on this rule, go check out the video I have made on it. It's pretty frustrating when you don't know why it isn't working, so make sure you know about it. 
I initially made the landing as a separate piece, just with the box slider, and it didn't work. It didn't work because the landing did not have a rigid body, neither did whatever floor it landed on. So the solution for that was pretty simple. Instead of making the landing collider on a separate game object, I just placed it on the main game object. So the main game object has a landing collider and then the physical shape collider is in a child game object. It's important that they are separated so I can make sure to only listen to collisions on the landing collider. Then for the code itself, it's very simple. Just listen to on collision enter. This gets triggered once when a collision occurs. And when that happens, in order to glue the probe, it's really just a matter of disabling movement and rotation on the rigid body. So it just frees everything so it stays completely fixed. But it should also match whatever it lands on. You don't want it to stay glued to a surface by the probe's head, meaning that what we really want is to rotate the probe to match the normal of whatever surface it landed on. So for that, we can use the collision parameters, which contains data for the exact normal that we need. Just apply that to the probe transform.up and it automatically rotates to match the surface perfectly. So with all of that, the probe behavior is working. It can be fired and moves like any projectile. If the landing gear touches something, it gets glued onto that surface. By the way, if you find the video helpful, please hit the like button. It's a tiny thing, but it really does help. Thanks. Now for the main part, taking the pictures. Like I said, this is super easy to do if you know about one Unity feature. I'm of course talking about render textures. This is one of the features that I cover in detail in my Ultimate Unity Overview course, so go ahead and get it if you want to learn more about it and 30 other Unity tools and features. What it does is it lets you render a camera view onto a specific texture instead of directly on the screen. So that's really all we need. So first create a render texture, then assign it to the camera output, and then with that render texture, just show it on screen. To show it, there's also one thing you need to know. In the UI, if you make an image component, it only supports showing sprites, but the render texture is a texture, it's not a sprite, so you cannot use it there. But there is another component, the raw image, and this one takes a texture instead of a sprite. So you can assign it, and with that you can view the render texture on the UI itself. Then for making it work like the game, the pro camera is meant to take pictures and not video, so it's not meant to be constantly updating. In order to handle that, it's very simple. Just keep the camera disabled so it's not rendering. And then when the player presses a button, simply enable the camera, render onto the texture and disable the camera again. This way it works like the game, taking pictures instead of full on video. Next up, for the visual on the camera, it's also different from the main game. This is another thing that's very easy to do. For adding post-processing to your games, you create an object and you add the volume component. Then you can add whatever post-processing you want. And then on the camera object, you have a field where you can select what post-processing affects that camera. Specifically, it's based on layers, so you can define the second post-processing in a new layer, and then you set the main camera to ignore that layer, and then the probe camera to only apply post-processing on that second layer. And yep, just like that, the main camera and probe camera are both using different post-processing effects. The next thing is just the probe camera rotation, also pretty simple, you just listen to player input, when the player presses a button, it's really just a matter of rotating the camera transform, so just rotate on the X and Y, and then after rotating, just take another image. And yep, that's pretty much it. So by pressing the buttons, you can rotate the image and see everything that the probe can see. When you put all of that together, we have recreated the probe exactly like in the game. So it works like a projectile, press the button and it gets fired. It moves like any projectile and falls along with gravity. Then for a landing, if it touches any object, it gets glued onto that object and matches the direction of the surface that it landed on. As it gets fired, it takes a picture of the probe camera the probe camera also has different visual, then manually the player can take some more pictures, and the player can also rotate the probe camera to see everything around the probe itself. Alright, so there you have it. That's how you can recreate the probe launcher from the Outer Wilds. It's a great mechanic and definitely something you can easily add to your games. Render textures are insanely useful and as you can see they'll let you create some really interesting mechanics. Check out the full How It's Made playlist, follow the curator page on Steam, and like this video if you want to see more of these types of videos. Also let me know what other games have some interesting mechanics that you'd like to know how they work. Also don't forget to check out the Ultimate Game Dev course in the description. It's only running for 30 days, so check it out and turn game dev into your dream job. Alright, hope that's useful, check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.